Hello everybody and welcome to Odd Bonsai. I'm Stefan and today we're going to start a Yaka Bonsai. I've been wanting to start a Yaka Bonsai for some time now, being inspired by the nice specimens of Nigel Saunders. I'll be linking some of his videos down below. And yeah, the other day I came upon this guy. It was thrown away by the side of the road without any pot. Its roots are a little bit dried up, but yeah, I think it will survive. Let's have a look at it and then we'll start the process of transforming it into a bonsai. So, if we look down here, it has the beginning of a nice trunk already. Nice old and with some cracks here. Uh, the root ball seems... Uh, to have taken over the pot a little bit, its previous pot. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's also beginning to have a bulge here at the root base. So it looks really, really nice in comparison to the option to start it from scratch. I'm really pleased with this. So if we go up, we'll see that its top has been chopped off. Probably the previous owner kept the top part to yeah, have a smaller, more compact yucca plant. So yeah, I'm pretty glad with it. Let's then start by cleaning the roots and we'll take it from there. Even though I sprayed it, Directly after bringing it, bringing it home, it seems that the roots are yeah, a little bit on the dry side, but yeah, since it's a yucca, I'm pretty confident that it will survive. So we'll get rid of all this soil, which is yeah, not the best for a bonsai, not very good for drainage and let's see, yeah, the trunk base it's looking pretty pretty nice some of these roots are breaking away but still has a lot of root to keep it going Trunk base is really looking, really looking nice. This soil is pretty hard, but yeah, since yuccas are pretty used to dry conditions, it should be okay. I'm getting a first big root here. side okay so yeah I'm pretty pleased with the, the size of the trunk base it's it's really nice and thick so yeah going to finish up with this soil removal and we'll get back to the root adjustment phase and potting Okay, so we got rid of all the dirt that was laying around here, or yeah, most of it. There's still some left here in between these dense roots. I will try to adjust the root base to make it flat. So this means I'll have to cut all these roots that are sticking right down from beneath the main trunk. There's still some soil left here. So by removing these roots, it should be 
easier to remove the soil that's left. I have the roots pretty much cleaned up now. Let's give it a little comb to have the roots placed nicely around the trunk. These yakas don't generate a very nice root system like you see in other normal trees. So yeah, you will always have these kind of fibrous roots, some thicker, some narrower. But yeah, so I am pretty amazed of this this uh, the size of the trunk at the base. So what was sticking out of the the earth that uh, I could see at the beginning was the trunk starting from this point upwards. So yeah, it got really really thick here on the base, which is really nice. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. So I certainly exceeded my expectations. Now the root plane will probably be around this point here. So I have a root here that's still sticking too high on the trunk. So I will be cleaning it up. Okay. Uh, maybe this small root as well. Some more earth is still stuck in here. I think this this might be it. This is the pot that I had in mind for using with this, this yaka. I initially wanted to use a smaller diameter pot, but given the size of the uh, trunk base here, yeah, I think this is this is uh, this is better. Now I'm going to start putting in some bonsai soil. I have this mix here. I'm yeah, experimenting a bit here. It's one-third perlite, one-third vermiculite and one-third normal potting compost. Uh, the perlite is pretty good for keeping in moisture and for drainage as well of course but it's very light. The vermiculite is, well, at least as bad, as good as the perlite in keeping water, but it's a little bit heavier, not that much. And for some added weight to the soil, I'm adding this uh, potting compost. And this should give it pretty good drainage. Let's have a first test. Yeah, so first of all, I will have to adjust the roots a bit because they are kind of uh, big. So let's adjust them a bit lengthwise or diameters wise. Okay. Don't want them touching the edge of the, the pot. They should be, I don't know, a little bit, one, two centimeters, maybe um, shorter than the edge of the, the pot. Let's try this again. Yeah, this, this looks nice, but I will have to raise it up a little bit. I want it maybe somewhere around here. Let's add some more soil. In the middle. 
done. Then we will be adjusting the size and position, the height and position. Okay, I think Yeah, I think this this looks good. Seems to be standing on its own. Let me give you another view. Here's a more ground level view of the position that this little yaka has in the pot right now. Yeah, I think that this this would be pretty good. So it will allow me to put some additional soil or a good layer of soil above the root and it will expose all this nice fat root base base here and yeah I'm not uh, aiming for filling the pot until the the edge here so yeah I, I think this is this is good let's continue with adding the rest of the bonsai soil and getting those roots filled in nice. Okay, adding more. I hope I have prepared enough of it. Have to make sure that these small roots are okay, radial and get covered by the soil so like that okay some here in the back as well have to make myself one of those rotating bonsai tables because it's not really easy working around the tree without the possibility of turning it around so yeah definitely have to get myself one of those okay this okay some more around here in the back I will now push up all this to fill in all the, the gaps around the roots to get this tree firmed up in the pot as best as possible and then maybe I will work with this top, top roots to getting them into the the ground. Another root here that's sticking up. The tree is kind of top heavy at the moment. So I will have to deal with that. I don't really want to pull all the leaves off because I'm not really sure what is its uh, health state is. It, it looks pretty good, but yeah, I wouldn't want to risk it. So the plan with it on the short term is just let it recover up until uh, I don't know midsummer maybe start of the summer midsummer somewhere around there and then 
give it a initial chop to where my first part of the, the trunk has to be. So my long term plan with it is to uh, look, make it look like a miniature version of one of those large yakas in nature. Uh, I did a little bit of googling and I found some specimens that I really did like and I'll show you uh, some pictures of those. So this species of yaka is called Yaka gigantia or Yaka elephant types which literally translates into uh, elephant foot which yeah is uh, because of the fact that in really large and old trees the base start to resemble uh, an elephant foot and yeah if you look at the pattern that the base has already and the fact that it is much larger in diameter when compared to the rest of the trunk, yeah, you may already get the idea of why it's called that way. So, you know, in the examples that you're seeing now, uh, you see that it has a real large or fat base from which at some point branches, several branches start to rise and yeah, those branches uh, are pretty tall and only subdivide pretty close to, to the top where they form the actual canopy of the tree. So here is one example which uh, is my, my favorite. This is from uh, the uh, Botanic Cactus uh, Gardens from Mallorca. And yeah, I think this, this will actually be the um, target for this tree getting a miniature version of that tree in the botanic garden botanic cactus gardens from Mallorca. I really like how that tree looks and yeah I'm hoping that maybe in I don't know 20 years or so I will be getting at least close enough to how that tree looks like. So yeah, I think the tree is starting to firm up a bit, it's still moving around, but yeah, as I said, the tree is kind of top heavy at the moment, so, and since the root, root system is not so large in diameter, it cannot really support all that, all that weight, so I will have to help it with I know, placing maybe some stones around the base. I think I've done as much as I could into firming up the soil. I will just arrange it a little bit in the pot. It's a little bit uh, higher here because yeah, of those roots that wouldn't stay down. And I will put some stones around the base. But first, I want to clean this, this base a little bit. So, yeah, it's not going into any show right now or anytime soon, but still should be looking. Don't think I can get rid of this uh, black coloring here. I think the yeah 
this wood paste has been just sitting into the ground too much into yeah wet soil and it will probably change its coloring uh, from its contact with the light and yeah air okay the rest will be I will get rid of the rest when I will water the tree okay so I found these stones here which I'm going to place how is it standing so I think I'm going to place one of these stones here in the back okay one of these will be sitting here somewhere and this last stone will be sitting right about here yeah I don't think this tree is going anywhere regardless of the top heaviness. What I want to do next is clean these old leaf stems that are left here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's nice to see. I don't know if you can notice this, but these are some old aerial roots that were yeah, just dried away. Since what I have in mind with the design of this tree doesn't really include having error roots I will be cutting these down so yeah this is off and the same with this one here and will be I think it's easier if I use my hand actually let's try this yeah they come down pretty easily by hand okay there's another air, air root here which I'm going to remove it means that at some point this Yucca has been living in a pretty wet environment. But afterwards the roots dried out. In actual trees that you find in nature you will don't see aerial roots. At least uh, specimens that I've seen didn't really had any error roots I think the tree is ready for watering now, but before using the big watering can, I'll first have to get all the perlite and vermiculite pretty wet, otherwise, yeah, they will just rise up and ruin my potting. I think this should be good enough. I will try the watering can now. From this other side as well. Yeah. 
The last thing that we will be doing to this tree today is taking care of any of these these leaves that are yeah damaged or so far off that they will not be of much use for the tree in recovering. So we have this branch here that has its top almost dried up. So I don't want to remove all the leaves as I said before. Uh, this leaf was broken off because I know, know the actual state of the tree and if it can take some energy still by using these leaves I would prefer that it does so. So most of these leaves don't look that great. So as I said I found this tree by the side of the road. Uh, I'm not necessarily concerned with dehydration uh, but the temperatures were kind of low so in the day that I found it we had uh, you know two or three degrees above zero during the night and however some days before we got below zero during the night and even though I read that the yuccas can stand temperatures uh, at around I know minus five up down until minus five degrees Celsius yeah I'm still concerned a little bit so I know why this discoloration of the leaves happened you see there's this yellowish area and it still has some green areas okay we have a broken leaf here so it will come off uh, yeah the leaves on this side seems to look much worse than these other side here see they are all green and uh, let's have another look at it starting from the bottom and then going up to the canopy this is the bottom of the tree you cannot see much of the root base because of these rocks but yeah still it's pretty visible how thick it is at the base now going up you can see the part of the trunk that i cleaned up from those old leaf stems now getting up to the leaves which yeah are not so many but still i hope they will be able to help in nourishing the tree and getting it up to shape so this was pretty much all for today let's wish this tree a good start and a long life as a bonsai and yeah let's hope everything will be just fine with this tree, it will recover properly and we will see it in as many future videos as possible while it's being developed. So thank you for watching this odd bonsai video of a Yucca Gigantia plant on its way to becoming a bonsai. Goodbye for now and see you in the next video.